yo guys and welcome back to a sport slash ZBrush speed sculpt video. This is a sport creation which I've imported into ZBrush to better refine and overall just kind of like make it look a lot better and a lot more detailed but like I said with a sport base. So the purpose of this creation was for a series of challenges I've been, or one of prompts actually I've been doing for the community and that is the hybrid prompts. For those of you who may have missed it or for those of you who may be watching this much much later into the future, I've been doing a bunch of uh, hybrid prompts, so basically just giving the community like two different creatures, you know, make a hybrid out of it, out of your own interpretations. It's been a lot of fun, like saying is as of right now, while the prompts are still going on, it's been an absolute blast, everyone's been having fun, it's been really really fantastic and I'm just really really happy about it. And for this one particular prompt, the Komodo Dragon slash Orc Whale was suggested by Dino Chris. And I really, really like this one in particular. This was a really, really cool idea. I already had the idea in mind, like the way I was going to interpret it. And I thought to myself actually that it would be really cool to do the base in Spore first. Uh, one, because it would actually allow me to make the body a lot faster. Since in ZBrush, while well, ZBrush you can do, you know, you can make the creature look however you want. You know, there's no limit to the definitions or the musculature or whatever. In sport, it is a lot more limited, but it's also a lot quicker, it's a lot rougher. I'm able to like really just, you know, map out the general base of how it's going to look very, very quickly. I think this creation took me probably about, um, I'd say about half an hour, maybe even quicker than that. Just something very quick and rough. It allowed me to make what basically call like a bit of a rough sketch, but in ZBrush form. Imagine how like you do like a little paper doodle, or, like a rough um, pencil sketch or a rough digital sketch. Imagine like, this being my equivalent, but in 3D. I know it's a little bit uh, a bit long, but hey, it works out. It's, it's my idea of a quick one. But also the other reason for doing it in Spore actually is also to you know do something that a lot of you guys can also take part in as well. The fact that you can export creations into a Maya related format and by using a tutorial which I'll link in the video description by Salivarul, you can then convert the Spore creation file into a .fbx and then convert that into a .obj which is a 3D format so a lot of programs like ZBrush, like Blender, Sculptress, a lot of these programs all support that and allow you to then you know create or um, modify your Spore creations in your 3D software of choice. So like I said, doing it this way, hopefully a lot of you guys can also, you know, try out the same thing. Since I know for a lot of people, doing things in 3D can be very daunting and, you know, rightfully so. You're making an entire 3D creation or model or whatever. It is a lot to take in. It's a lot to do and, you know, take into account. Doing it in Spore first means that, you know, you get to have fun in your familiar software. Make a creature, however way you wish. You've got all the parts already pre-made for you. You can just sit back, relax, have fun. In my case, really adjusting out a like, very rough, vague base. You will notice throughout the creation that it is uh, kind of low effort, such as around the neck already. I would never make my necks that way. But I've been doing all this, you know, keeping in mind the fact that I'm going to be taking to ZBrush using Dynamesh. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, Dynamesh is a feature in ZBrush which basically remeshes everything. It recalculates everything. It recalculates all the polygons and everything into a set resolution that you determine. And then in that remesh, you know, everything's like a very nice, clean, you know, squared polygons. It's very much a, you know, demonstrator to show you kind of thing. It's kind of hard to describe. But like I said, it remeshes it, it just makes everything, you know, kind of ties everything together, stitches it all up into like one large solid piece. So this is the end of my creation. Like I said, looking very, very, um... <laughs> basic. The textures, I didn't even bother the textures to be honest. Because again, I'm going to be doing it in ZBrush. So. I've finished my sport creation. Here we go. Here we are in ZBrush. It's the very same thing that you've just seen. So now, like I said, I just used Dynamesh. Now everything is one large solid mass. In order to do that, I did have to Dynamesh at a very, very high resolution than I normally would. So while this is meant to be like a quick, um, like a quick sculpt for me, I did have to redo a lot of features in this simply because, you know, again, it's like it's already a pre-made sculpt, so I couldn't just start at a low resolution like I normally would. And start off quite high, smoothing out all the polygons, all the like, little sharp edges and such, make the entire thing smooth without losing detail either. So it was like a very quick little stage of polish. Then after that, the very first thing I did was flatten the tail because it was a spore tail after all. It kind of uh, clipped to the ground a little bit, so I had to flatten that to make it consistent with the hands. I completely redid the face. I did not like the face I had at all in sport. I wanted something much more Komodo dragon-like. In fact, if anything, it was actually quite a bit Mosasaur-like. This is a bit of a funny thing that a lot of people pointed out, was that the Komodo dragon orca whale idea is basically a Mosasaur. And that was actually really cool to figure out. 
I think a lot of us had like a lot of Mosasaur themes in uh, each of our individual interpretations as of, you know, as of recording this video, I've not gone over the interpretations yet. So this video might or might not come out of that, we don't know yet, you know, timing. <laughs> but as of saying this, I've only seen like very rough looks at everyone else's projects. So really looking forward to seeing like how we all independently interpret, interpret this. But yes, back to my sculpt though. So, like I said, completely rooted the face. I added a bit of webbing between the arm and the body, like a, just a large skin flap, like almost like a wing in a way. Uh, that was just purely for design choice. I thought it looked really cool just to like add um, like this larger area. I did not do that in war. I could have done it with a flattened nail down and stretched it across. The reason why I did not do that is because I knew that I could do it very quickly and effectively in ZBrush. It would look a lot cleaner, a lot neater, just overall better. Whereas, or and more defined. Whereas if I did it in Spore, and had that skin of um, that uh, layer of flesh there, it just would have looked uh, very clunky, very thick, and just not really what I had in mind. I, uh, speaking of thick, <laughs> I did make the rest of the creature uh, much larger overall. So I had the idea here. After looking at a lot of references for Komodo dragons, they really drag their belly a lot, at least the references that I saw. They're very fat <laughs> reptiles. Meanwhile, you look at an orc whale, and that's nothing but blubber, blubber and muscle. So I did, of course, have to make like a much larger animal, which is really not what I normally do. I don't mean to do this, but I do tend to make my creatures very lean. So this was like quite an interesting contrast for myself here. So I did add like a lot of musculature, particularly around the neck, around the back of the head, uh, mimicking like a bit of a fold of skin that some of Komodo dragon references and photos. I made the stomach very large as well, again, reflecting both of those. And then I had to make the entire thing just wider, like really try to emphasize the um, the blubber. Like I said, it was really, really was quite interesting. It's not something I normally do and it was quite fun. It was actually really fun to just, you know, picture and figure out where all the different bits of flesh is going to be. So after that, I did also do quite a bit of work on the tail, just generally just um, polished up a little bit more, made the fins a lot, th uh, a lot wider, made, uh, basically added the fins on the tail, just much more surface area in general. After that, I then ramped up the uh, the resolution a lot higher, so the level of detail I can apply. Made the lips a little bit more defined and the eyes. The hands, because of the technique I used in sport, the hands are pretty much already done. All I had to do was to find the wrists, like the uh, bits of skin around the wrists, and of course the claws. I'd actually separate the claws from the body or from the hands. Normally, I would make the claws an entirely separate mesh entirely. That way I can also give them a different material. I admittedly just straight up did not bother with that in this. It would have been very simple and easy to do, but I just didn't bother because this is just meant to be my idea of like a nice, quick, relaxed sculpt. Um, of course, I put effort into this, you know, I want it to look nice and cool and polished, but I didn't go quite as, I would just say, I didn't use the same techniques and, you know, theory that I normally would. Normally I do try to use like a lot, much more, uh, much more effective, much more efficient techniques to try to get certain um, appearances. This time, no, it was just really, really nice and rough and quick. Very laid back, relaxed. You get the, you get the point. When I say that, I did put a lot more effort into the webbing around the feet, or the uh, hands, excuse me. The idea I had was that, I was about to say Nakamoto sword, I would have been wrong. Uh, like some reptiles, I guess, or just some animals in general. I figured that it would look quite nice if they just had like webbed hands. That way, you know, webbed hands along with the webbed skin between the arms and the body. I thought it would just like really, again, emphasize the whole aquatic look. Imagine I'd like, be like a bit of a paddler or something. I don't know. I'm not sure how it would actually work, you know, in reality, but as a concept, I thought it looked cool. Speaking of the hands actually in the paddling, I intentionally gave it only the one set of arms, the front arms, the legs, I imagined, would just be like the vestigial um, back fins. Again, I'm not really sure how that would actually work in reality, but as a hybrid concept, I thought it just looked quite cool. After all, this is the entire appeal of hybrids to me, it's not necessarily think about, uh, well I do think about some realism, but not scientific realism, you know, I go for something believable, but not strictly possible, I like there to be like a bit of fantasy, a bit of imagination to it, hence why I then ended up coming out with some kind of like a Mosasaur skull crawler hybrid. <laughs> this does look a lot like a aquatic skull crawler from uh, Kong Island, or sorry, Kong Skull Island. Which I didn't really mind to be honest. I thought it'd like give it like a bit of an interesting, um, 
an interesting thing. Kind of make it stand out a bit more than, as opposed to if I'd given it zero legs, it would have just looked like a whale. If I gave it uh, four legs or like two sets of um, arms and legs, it would have then just looked like a, you know, like an aquatic commander dragon. So I figured just by having the one set of limbs, it was like a really nice in-between while maintaining the fins, which would have been, like I said, in vestigial legs. Right. <laughs> and after that, it was just lots and lots of detailing, just slapping on all the scales. So I had quite a bit of fun with the scales because it's actually been a bit of a while since I went with like a rough scale technique. It used to be my standard where I'll just slap on alphas and stitch them all together and just keep on, you know, going and going and going. Whereas more recently, I've been doing a lot more serious work and a lot more commissions, which means I've been putting a lot more effort into my scales, doing everything manually, very clean, very neat, you know, trying to make it look as good as I can. So for this one, like I said, again, meant to be like just a rough sketch, like a very nice, quick, relaxed sculpt. It was quite nice just to be able to slap on the uh, details again. It did feel a little bit wrong, I will admit. I didn't take, you know, complete joy in it, but it was nice to just relax with it. Uh, saying that, I already got to abuse a tool I'd forgotten to use. <laughs> uh, the, I can't remember what it's called, it's like the layer layer pattern, I think. Um, it's a tool that allows you to basically you draw an alpha into like a very long repetitive pattern, like it will repeat the pattern by itself, or loop. And you could argue it's kind of lazy. At the same time, it's also very efficient. Like, I guess if I, like, really took the time to, you know, kind of intertwine it into other alphas, it would look really good. But for this one, I kind of just kept on doing streaks and streaks and streaks of these alphas, like, just covering the thing in tiny scales, which I was really quite happy with because I rarely do give my cre uh, give my sculpts, like, lots and lots of small scales. Normally when I give my sculpts a lot of scales, they're normally, like, either quite large or very defined. Not very often I do, like, lots of very small or rough ones. I also tried to give it like a lot of, um, uh, I'm not sure if there really are scars. I did try to give it a lot of uh, lines and creases. Also like a bit of um, wrinkles around the neck and the arm flap thing, the wing. We'll just call it the wing. <laughs> I tried to do like a lot of um, wrinkles around the wing and all those places. Again, I just tried to you know emphasize as a very baggy creature since Komodo dragons are quite baggy. And when I get into the colour scheme, I gotta say, I love the colours. I absolutely love the colours. I was going to go with an orca whale colour scheme from the very beginning. Because I think it's safe to, I think it's safe to um, say here that this overall sculpt has a very reptile feel. There's not very much whale in it, is there, for an orca whale, Komodo dragon hybrid. So by giving it a uh, orca whale texture, it's a bit of a cheap solution, I would admit. It was very simple and easy, but it kind of worked out. And personally, I, I, I like the way I did it. An orca whale is a very standard, you know, black and white. I went with a darker blue, intentionally, because, well, first of all, blue just because I wanted to. You know, it's going to be quite as simple as that. When I looked at orca whale um, images, it could have been a reflection of the ocean, I'm not sure, but a lot of their black did seem to have, like, a bit of a blue hue to it. Uh, hence why I like, really emphasised the blue in mine. Also, I didn't want to make it green and white as opposed to blue and white, because I think the green just would have looked a bit weird, to be entirely honest. So again, you know, the blue, oh, and also the blues, again, you know, reflect on the ocean. It just gives like a much more aquatic vibe. And I added a whole assortment of dark uh, rainbow-ish kind of hues. You may have probably see me just like drop them all all over the place. Now that did look very messy. It is very messy, but that was kind of the end point. I did want to have like a very, very messy, um, just a whole mess of shades all around onto the black and blue. And I felt like that when it's rendered, you know, it kind of just adds like a little bit of an extra element. It's very, very subtle, very rough, but again, it just adds like a little bit more than than if it were just a flat colour. And then for the white underbelly, that, that was it. It was a white underbelly. I actually didn't add any shading whatsoever to this as I started jotting out the shapes and uh, having a bit of creativity here as well, like here and there, like around the tail, around the uh, fins and the wing thing. <laughs> And like, um, I added a lot more white to this than Orkwell normally would because there's a lot of areas I wanted to highlight, such as the pads on the hands, the um, the tail, etc. But yeah, like I said, when I did add the white in, I really liked how the white looked. I loved how it's this big stark contrast compared to the rest of the body. Whereas the black and blue were all these various hues and colour schemes. The white, which is so bold, that it to me just looked perfect. And I loved, really, really loved how it looked. And I'll probably be doing that a lot more often in the future. When it came to the actual final finish, um, it might be the eyes, I'm not sure, but in the end it had like a very soft, kind of cute appearance. 
not intended by the slightest, but honestly, I really quite liked it. I did want to add spikes and horns and such because I, I like making spiky things, but I really went against it because neither the Komodo dragon nor the orca whale had the uh, had spikes. And also my next prompt idea, which is as of recording this, not been announced, that would have been a good opportunity for me to use spikes instead. So I kind of thought to myself, okay, yeah, I'll save it. I won't do it just yet. Uh, but in the end, yeah, I really like the- I actually really like how smooth this looks. It's, a, it's very different to my usual sculpt, it's very different to my usual styles, but I, I just like it to be honest. <laughs> I'm very, very satisfied with the outcome. And again, for it being part of the hybrid prompts, I think it's just a really cool addition and one that I hope a lot of other people can enjoy as well. All in all, just something fun to do. Is this good to just have a bit of fun every now and then? Just a nice, you know, simple, relaxed uh, sculpt or drawing or what, what have you. I liked it. I enjoyed it. And to that I say, a project well done. As always everyone, thank you all very very much for watching and I do hope that you've enjoyed it. I also hope that the whole idea of going from a sport creation to ZBrush could be something a lot of you guys are willing to try out as well. I really would recommend taking sport creations into a 3D program, it is really cool. Like I said, the converts I use, I'll link the tutorial down in the video description down below. Really would recommend it. And of course, I gotta say a huge, huge thank you to my patrons for allowing me to keep on doing this and just supporting me and making, you know, YouTubing possible. Especially a huge thank you to Pikapai, Frostbite, The Dragon Queen and Glass the Absol. Cheers guys, and as always, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you all next time. Cheers.